Yes, it's an absolutely glorious afternoon at Belmont Park. A crowd of some 57,000 has gathered here today under just about perfect weather conditions. The temperature is 70 degrees, and I'm Jim McKay reporting from Belmont. Any one of three horses can win that million-dollar bonus today. There's winning colors, the filly. Can she become the first of her sex ever to win two legs of the Triple Crown? She has a couple of advantages. She gets a five-pound weight allowance, of course, as a filly. But also, she is the only real, honest, early speed in this race. Conceivably, she could fly out of the gate and hold the lead all the way around. Then there's Risen Star, the winner of the Preakness. He sure got the pedigree. His daddy, Secretariat, on this racetrack 15 years ago, won this race by 31 lengths. Yesterday morning, Risen Star, the Preakness winner, of course, had a bullet workout of 33 and change for three-eighths of a mile. Could be good for him. Could prove his class. Could be bad for him. Horses have left their race in a fast workout the day before. And then there's Brian's time. Now, he hasn't won a race since the 4th of March, the Florida Derby, uh, down at Gulfstream Park in Florida, and yet... He is the favorite in this race at the moment. Principally on his breeding, he's by a long-distance horse, Roberto, winner of the Epsom Derby. And also, he was a fast-flying second in the Preakness. Now, he said any one of the three could win the bonus. Here is the way it stands right now. Five for win, three for second, one for third in any of the Triple Crown races. Winning Colors has six, having won the Derby second in the Preakness. Risen Star was third in the the Derby and first in the Preakness. Uh, winning Colors was third, of course, in the Preakness. And Brian's time with three points was second in the Preakness Stakes at Baltimore. Now, as for the specifics, I'll get that word yet. Try the specifics of this race. It's the 120th Belmont Stakes at a distance of a mile and a half with a purse of more than a half a million dollars. That's plus the bonus, of course, for the three races. The distance, as we said, a mile and a half. Track conditions very fast today. The times have been good. And the temperature, as we said, a perfect 70 degrees. Time now to go to a beautiful position on the veranda overlooking the paddock. A suitable place for Al Michaels, Al. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. It is beautiful, and as you can see, very verdant and also very placid, quite in contrast to what this race is at a mile and a half. And by the way, this is a mile and a half track, so they'll go around once at almost every other track in the country. They'd have to negotiate three turns, just two, for the Belmont. This is very much a war of attrition as it's been through the years at a mile and a half, as is the entire Triple Crown Series. Remember the first Saturday in May when 17 had high hopes starting the Kentucky Derby? And then 10 of those horses fell by the wayside. Seven Derby starters plus two others started at the Preakness in Baltimore for a field of nine. And now we are down to only six, all of whom ran in the Kentucky Derby, four of whom ran three weeks ago at the Preakness. And the early betting is extremely interesting and runs quite counter to the morning line as we take a look right now at the odds for the Belmont. Cephas, the Woody Stevens trained horse, was 12 to 1 on the morning line, is 9 to 1. Then there's Granakis, everybody's favorite long shot. I suppose that's a misnomer, but that's the way you'd phrase it, 6 to 1. Winning colors right now is the co-second choice at 5 to 2. King Post is the decided long shot at 15 to 1. Risen Star, as is the case with winning colors at the moment, being held at 5 to 2. And the surprising favorite is the horse that finished second in the Preakness, Brian's Time, currently held at 8 to 5. One of the big stories, of course, this week has been Risen Star and the ankle injury and his health. Let's get the latest on that as we go to the Barnes and Charles C. Canty. Well, thank you, Al. Of course, the nature of uh, the injury to Risen Star's right front ankle has been the source of a great deal of speculation this week and a source of concern for this man, Louis Roussel. Louis, just exactly what is wrong with Risen Star's ankle? Well, Chelsea, he uh, strained himself. He got loose from the outrider. I mean, I should say the exercise person, on the 28th of May. And uh, while they were pulling him up, he caught himself one time with his foot, and he also was off balance and strained the suspensory ligament that runs down. Minor injury, and we've been concerned whether it would get worse, and that's why we've been ultrasounding him. After we galloped him for a couple of days, we ultrasound him to take a look at the lesion again, the spot, and it's still the same size. And then we worked him yesterday, mm -hmm. and uh, we took another ultrasound of him, and it's the same size as it was last week. Obviously, you're going ahead with him, but the work yesterday, 33 and 3, was dazzling, but was it, was it what you wanted? Well, no, we would like to see him go a little bit slower, mm -hmm. Charles. I mean, uh, if he would have gotten 35 and changed, we'd have felt better. But uh, there was no hold in him yesterday. I think it was all we could do. He was very fresh. He missed a couple of days, Saturday and Sunday galloping. He was very fresh. So uh, I guess we're just no use worrying about it now. We'll find out very shortly. Good luck, Lou, and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Charles. Risen Star is half the team. Dave Johnson's in the jocks room with the other half.
I'm with uh, Eddie Delahousie. Eddie, after the Preakness, we found out that you were going to go to the Philly if a 49er didn't. Are you going to engage her this afternoon? I don't know. I haven't talked to the trainer yet, and uh, we'll see what happens uh, when I get in the paddock. You're not going to give us any secrets, is that well, it? Well, well, everybody will find out when the gate opens. I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen myself. But your horse has some early speed. Well, he showed some in the Preakness last time, so uh, I just hope he, I can place him a couple of lengths off the Philly. Eddie, uh, at a mile and a half, are the West Coast jockeys you included at a disadvantage because you don't ride here that much? Well, yes and no. I mean, you're not used to these big sweeping turns, but uh, I think a uh, top rider can adjust to it very quickly. Is it fun being from New Orleans on this afternoon? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It'll be a lot of fun if we win. Okay, good luck. Eddie Della, who's long tunnel that leads to the race course, the longest race course in the United States, one and a half miles in circumference. It'll be just one time around. And we'll find out who's won this year's Belmont. Many of these horses, most of them probably, will never run this long again in their life. A mile and a half isn't raced too often in this country. But they're on their way right now to the post. Soon the call to the post, the sidewalks of New York. There's the bugle. Now they begin to come into sight of the crowd, and Charles E. Canty has joined me here. You were very active about there. Everybody seemed pretty tight today. Well, considering there's no triple crown at stake, the emotional pitch in the paddock was quite large. When Woody Stevens walked in, he played that crowd like a fiddle. He put his arms up, and they cheered him. It is his racetrack. The Nassau County Bugle and Drum Corps with the sidewalks of New York. The horses are on the track for the Belmont State. This race will be good. And so we've heard my old Kentucky home five weeks ago, Maryland, my Maryland, three weeks ago, and now the sidewalks of New York. The greatest riders in the country, the top three year olds, the tremendous crowd, the beautiful sunshine, and the pleasant breeze. What more could you ask on a rare day in June, Charlie? Not at all. Just a rematch of all these personalities and individuals. All these wonderful, colorful stories we've had throughout the Triple Crown. We'll kind of miss this next week when there's not another leg left. Well, we still have the Travers to go in the Arlington Million comes the month of August. There's a wide look at Belmont Park, rebuilt in the 1960s. The grandstand, of course, the racetrack has been here for many years. This race was not always run at a mile and a half. There have been only two Phillies to win it. One was ruthless in the very first Belmont ever run in 1867. And the other was Tanya in 1905. So should winning colors win today, she'll be the first Philly in 83 years to win the Belmont. Let's take a look at the field now in the post parade. Number one is Cephas. Only two Maryland breads have ever won the Belmont. The most recent was the sire of Cephas, caveat in 1983. And the other one was uh, way Cloverbrook way, way back in 1877, I believe. The jockey, though, Lafitte Pinkai Jr. and Charlesy, that could be significant. He won three of these in a row. Woody Stevens tends to call upon him at the last minute to deputize for the Belmont, and he was successful three times. The regular jockey has been Eddie Maple, but they switched to Pinkai. Number two is Granakis, the Canadian representative, written by Jacinto Vasquez, who originally had ridden Risen Star to victory over 49er. Uh, then Delahousse was brought in, and Vasquez jumped over to Granakis, who's been working beautifully here. And Jacinto Vasquez is a good judge of a horse, and he likes Granakis' chances. Okay, here is the filly. Of course, lots of sentimental support for her today, and lots of real support. She's actually third choice in the betting because there's been 548,000 bet to win on Brian's time, 537 on Risen Star, and 504 on the filly, but they're all held at 2-1 to one on the board. There's Gary Stevens, a tight look at the young man who really exploded after the Preakness has seemed to calm down a bit now. Number four, here is King Post, long shot in the field, trained by the woman Diane Carpenter. No woman trainer has ever won the Belmont, ridden by Robbie Davis. And not considered a beautiful horse, but a talented one. Not by any means. He's long and lean and rangy, but he's got a race over the track, and he's worked well here. He wants the distance. He is a gelding. Only one gelding has ever won the Belmont, and that was Creme Fresh just a couple of years ago. Eddie Dello, who's say on Risen Star now, number five at two to one, winner of consecutive Kentucky Derbies, winner this year on this horse of the Preakness Stakes at Pimlico in Baltimore. And the favorite, the surprising favorite, Brian's time, this son of Roberto, out of a Graustark mare, ridden by Angel Cordero, Jr., 
owned by Jody and Wally Phillips, the daughter and son-in-law of John W. Galbraith, and trained by John the Ball. That can take the edge off a horse, can cost him the race. Well, Bill Bolin was reminiscing the other day in the track kitchen. He rode middle ground to victory in the Belmont Stakes. He said Max Hirsch blew him out the day before the race in 33, then came back the next morning and blew him out another race. <laughs> <laughs> I take it you don't subscribe to that theory, then. Well, this is a big, strong horse who really is sharp in his gallops, and he's, he hasn't really breathed. He's been two-minute licking ever since the uh, Preakness, and that keeps him pretty sharp. Well, here we are. Here is Sister Mary Vincent down with the Little Sisters of the Poor in New Orleans. Sister, I'd like to hear from you the I story can of... Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Sister? Can you hear me, Sister? No, I can't. You can't. You must. <laughs> <laughs> How did you... Bit, I guess. How did the sisters come together with Risen Star? How did that happen? Well, we're in the middle of a building fund program. And I went to see Louie and asked him for a donation. And he said, um, a week later, he said, I, I thought over it, and I have a great deal for you. If you pray the Risen Star wins, I'll give you some of the winnings. So since then, Risen Star has been our favorite horse. Okay, I'm sure you've handicapped the race. You, mu you must know a lot more about racehorses than you did five, six months ago. Well, there is Louis Absolutely. Roussel. Thank you very much, sister. And uh, Louis Roussel, the owner, half-owner, and trainer of Risen Star. And there's Woody Stevens looking for his sixth Belmont. It would be six out of the last seven for Woody, should he win today. And John Veach. Somewhat surprised, I suspect, that his horse is the favorite here today. Well, obviously, the public here feels the mile and a half is the key. Probably it is. He's been wanting more ground all along. And Gene Klein, the former owner of the San Diego Chargers, he says football was nothing compared to the horses. Very upset three weeks ago and now hoping for vindication for his filly today. The track, the stakes, and the world record of 224 was set on this racetrack by Secretariat in 1973 when he won the Belmont Stakes by... 31 lengths, and his son is Risen Star, second choice in the betting here today. No son of his has yet won the Belmont. The key today is to watch the pace. Eddie Delahousse on Risen Star is really the man on the hot seat. The Philly obviously will go to the lead. Eddie Delahousse is up to him to stalk her and not let her get too far without compromising his own chances. And that sets the scene for the call of the race. Let's go up on top now to Dave Johnson. All right, Dave. Cephas is in, and Granakis follows a roar from the crowd of over 55,000. Let's listen to them low. That's Gary Stevens. And winning colors quickly takes command. Risen Star on the outside into the second spot. And between horses, King Post is up close early in third. Then it's a gap of about three. Ryan's time is fourth on the outside. Granakis is racing fifth. And Cephas is the trailer as the sextet rounds the first turn. It's winning colors in command by a length of three quarters. Risen Star in pursuit from the second spot. And Robbie Davis has King Post right there third. Then it's a gap of about six. For Brian's time on the outside fourth. Renakis is at the rail. And about eight lengths farther back to Cephas. From winning colors to Cephas, about 25 lengths. Moving to the back stretch. Winning Colors now has an easy lead after the first quarter in 23 and 2, and coming to the half mile mark, and that's in 47 and 1. So, Winning Colors in front by about four lengths, probably not as slow as Gary Stevens would like it to be, but Winning Colors has the lead by three, and Risen Star is right there by the same margin, and now cutting the gap to about a length and a half. Here comes Risen Star. Delahousse asks the son of Secretariat for speed and gets it. Only a half length separate the Kentucky Derby and Preakness winner as they move down the backstretch. Three quarters in 111 and four, the pace is quickening. Now it's winning colors in front three parts of a length. Risen Star on the outside is second by four. King Post is third. Brian's time fourth on the outside ahead. Granakis is fifth, and it's another 15 lengths back to the trailer. Cephas as they round the far turn. 
Now heads apart, Riz and Star on the outside. The Preakness winner takes command from the Derby winner. Winning colors along the inside, drops back second by two and a half. King posted close up third. That's the longest shot on the board, and he's within striking distance. Three and a half back, Brian's time. They move to the top of the stretch, and Risen Star has the lead by three. The Philly is dropping back as King Post makes his move on the outside. They're approaching the quarter pole, and Risen Star has the lead by four. Eddie Delahousie aboard. King Post is in the runner-up spot at this point. Brian's time at the rail is racing third. Winning colors back to fourth. Then, then uh, Cephas and Bernakis. But past the eighth pole, Risen Star drawing away. He looks like his daddy at this point. Risen Star in front and down the stretch they come. Risen Star drawing off. He's in front by 15, by 18. Risen Star takes the Belmont just like his daddy Secretariat did. King Post finishes second. Brian's time third. Then it was Cephas Bernakis and the Philly winning colors finishes third. They're jubilant at Belmont, I'm sure in New Orleans. The final time on the board, two minutes, 26 and two fifth seconds. And that, Dave, is the second fastest Belmont in his history. Second only to the great Secretariat. The unofficial winner, Risen Star. Second, the long shot, King Post. And third, Brian's time. An electrifying run, a 15-length victory for this man's horse, for Risen Star. And you saw the hilarity down there with the little sisters. He's won two legs of the Triple Crown, and the million-dollar bonus will go to New Orleans. Uh, the outrider there, Caroline, uh, you hear me that there? Yes. Eddie, congratulations. Thank you very much. Done it again. Yeah, it's great. It's a great feeling. Great to win the Belmont. My first one, and I tell you what, Louis Roussel and his crew done a hell of a job with this horse. Well, so did you, Eddie, and congratulations. We'll talk to you further when you get into the winner's circle. Thank you. Eddie Delahousse has now won two Kentucky Derbies, and he won them consecutively. He's won the Preakness, and now he's won the Belmont. And Risen Star is well on his way to glory. In the winner's circle, Louis Roussel and his dad, Louis Roussel, the second, and Mrs. Lamarck and Mrs. Delahousie and Eddie Delahousie and Vicki Bailey and Tom Bancroft and Ronnie Lamarck Christy. and little Christy Lamarck. Tom Bancroft, the chairman of the New York Race Racing Association now with the presentation, Tom. All right, well, Louis, you had us guessing down in Baltimore at the Preakness. We didn't know what you were doing. You came along and you won the race. You kept us guessing up here. And you had a beauty today when you came across that finish line. Congratulations on winning the 120th Belmont State. Right. Well you. done. Well done. Thank you, Jim. I'd like to say hello to my mother who's back in New Orleans and everybody from Louisiana. He is the pride of New Orleans and Louisiana. You should have seen the shot we had of the little sister jumping up and down after the race. <laughs> Eddie Delahousie, would you come? Eddie, would you come over here? We can have a look at the race. Eddie Delahousie, winner of two derbies now and a Preakness and a Belmont. Well, I tell you what, it was very exciting, and I can add the Belmont to my fabulous career I've had. Thank good Lord. Here we go. Coming out of the number five hole. Yeah, he broke real nice, Jim, and uh, I got him running a little bit. I wanted to try to lay second without having to use him. As he moved up to the Philly right there, I grabbed a hold of him and just tried to leave him relax and stuff. Did you notice King Post in there? That was kind of a surprise. Well, uh, in the Kentucky Derby, King Post was ahead of me when we ran in the Derby, uh, and it wasn't surprising, especially going a mile and a half. You know, horses tend to lay a little closer than you do in shorter distances. But uh, right here, I let the filly go on out, and uh, I just waited till nearing the three-quarter three -quarter pull, then I, I called on him a little bit, just want to get close to it. And as, when I did get close to her, uh, she just, my horse just relaxed very kind, and he was going smooth, and I just wanted to wait and see. I waited till actually the quarter pole before even chirped him to go on. You think maybe the filly can't be rated? I don't know. Uh, apparently, either she can't be rated, or she might not be able to go that far, Jim. The pace wasn't that fast. Uh, as, as the track's been playing fast all day today, so, um, of course, going a mile and a half, 47's not a bad time. But right here, the coat's going very easy, and I could see Gary's filly. She was very, she was struggling, and I knew I had her. All I wanted to do is have enough horse left. Were well, you thinking now about the horses in vacuum, about Brian's time and Cephas and the other come from behind horse? Well, absolutely, you, you think about them, but this horse was going so easy, Jim. 
I wasn't that particularly concerned at this point. And uh, when I when I got near in the stretch, he felt sh just as strong as he did when when I I left the half mile pole. You know, and uh, right here, as you see, he's just going on his own. You ever hit him with your no, I don't believe I tapped him at all. But when he changes leads in the stretch, you can see him. He'll excel. Boy, he'll just really excel. He, he looks switched. like he's still coming yeah. into his full his full power. Yeah, right here, he's just all into it. He's really digging in, and right then and there, I knew if anything would outrun him here, well, that I had to beat Secretariat's record, and he almost came close to his daddy's. Well, he had the second fastest Belmont in history, although it was two and two fifths slower than Secretariat, but that time was out of sight. Yeah, but boy, he's a he's a super horse, and Louis Roussel and his cr crew done a great job, and I thank uh, Louis and Ronnie Lamarck for everything. You know, it's crazy. Think back before the Kentucky Derby, as you see the complete order of finish, Roussel was auditioning riders. He was bringing riders in to see how they performed, working Risen Star out. He looked at the tapes. He settles on De La Husi, So Eddie wins the audition and takes the Oscar as well, I suppose, winning two of the three legs. Risen Star, the winner. King Post surprisingly finishes second. Brian's time was third. Cephas running an even race fourth. Granakis never fired, finished fifth, and winning colors went from the lead to dead last. Let's go back to Jim again. All right, and now for the presentation of the million dollar bonus, the first Chrysler Triple Crown challenge. Again, here is Clark Patuli and Tom Meeker, the president of Triple Crown Productions, and of course, the president of Churchill Downs. Thank you, Jim. Again, on behalf of Chrysler Corporation and Triple Crown Productions, this $1 million check to you, Mr. Rizal. Congratulations to you. Thank you very much. I want to thank the Chrysler Corporation. We use their products, and we find them to be very good products. We're glad to have them. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Tom. Tom, the Triple Crown has come a long, long way in the last few years, and congratulations to you and Frank DeFrancis and Tom Bancroft for what's happened. Well, thank you so much. I think uh, it reflects what's uh, happening here in New York and what's happening in Maryland and Kentucky. Uh, we hit on the right, right uh, system. And more particularly, I want to thank Chrysler because they've been very instrumental in boosting the whole Triple Crown series. Louis, this may surprise you that your horse now has won more money with that bonus than his daddy, Secretariat, did in his whole career. That's unbelievable. All I can say is praise the Lord. God really smiled in his horse today. We had a lot of trouble this past week, and he got it through us. And to everyone who's at home, the only thing I'd like to say, people who, are, who don't have a chance, an opportunity to be here, I wish I could share it with them. Anybody who's sick at home, I sure hope they feel better. Why are you always so nervous? Well, I guess there's a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> a lot of pressure. Not so much now, Louie. Congratulations. Thanks, Jim. We can go what? home now. And where does he go from here? Well, we hope that maybe we consider the Travers or maybe back to Louisiana Downs for the Super Derby. Depends on how the injury is after the race. Okay, well, we'll be there at the Travers in August. We hope that you'll be there.